How's it going everybody? It's the Viking season and we do have a Viking sponsor as well this time. Viking jewelry to be exact. As you can see there is a wide variety of different things from bracelets to earrings to pendants. And because of the release of Jormunganda I got two different discount codes for you. The first one is 30% off on this pendant here. I won't even attempt to pronounce it correctly but for this naughty compass for the first 48 hours of this promotion you can use freeze 30 at the checkout. And if you're interested in something else then you get 20% off for the next 15 days. Use freeze 20 at the checkout in that case. Mind you both of these codes work on top of the currently ongoing summer sale. Can't really think of a more fitting sponsor for this season so definitely check them out. All the links that you'll need will be in the video description. Alright, undocumented changes. We've had a rather big patch this season so it was kind of inevitable that we'd see a lot of things that can't be found in the patch notes. I've been holding off with this video because new stuff has been surfacing almost hourly but I also didn't want to make a half hour video. So depending on how much stuff is being found I might do a second part. For now this is what's new, starting with Jormunganda. The guard break vulnerability on the zone should be known by now but just to confirm it, it's the proper 100 milliseconds now. The window that is expected of an attack of that type, you can reliably use it as an option select parry now and beat out faint to guard break with it. Another change was to the parry follow up bash. It used to do 45 damage during the early access if I remember correctly and it does 15 now. Doesn't really take away from the stamina bully roll all that much, you just have to decide whether you want to do damage after a parry or if you just go for the neutral bash that is also confirmed to drain the extra bit of stamina. There is also the general complaint that your Munganda feels clunky but that's something that comes up I mean, for every new character. I tried different methods for guards which is an attacks after specific moves but there isn't really anything standing out or not working as intended. It's probably just the normal somewhat long recoveries that feel off for people. I can confirm that the guard switch after a neutral bash is still bugged but I've shown this in the frame check video already. It just made it to life but I expect this to be fixed soon and it can't be the sole reason for people's complaints. If someone has specific situations in which it's apparent then please let me know I will look into it. Moving on to other characters, there is a very specific Nobushi and Sham interaction now. Nobushi's bleed moves all got changed in this patch, except for the second part of her zone. That still works like it did pre-patch, meaning it does the old amount of damage and cannot be infinitely stacked like the new version. The specific interaction with Shaman is that she does not cleanse the bleed with a bite. If a Nobu bleeds the opponent for you, you can chain bites again because of it. Keep an eye on the health bar and you'll immediately notice it. It's especially visible if you apply two different types of bleeds because then only part of it will be removed with the bite. It's a weird interaction since the only new property Nobushi's bleed attacks should have received is the ability to stack without a limit. But other bleeds that have that very thing work just fine with Shaman's bite. It's also interesting to see that the bleed removal is not a property of the bite itself but it's coded on the bleed. Talking about bleeds, Valkyrie got a buff on her shoulder pin. It used to tick only 3 times but now it ticks 5 times, upping the damage to 20 direct and 25 bleed damage. Considering you do get a top light against reflex guard heroes and against static guard with a block to the side. You can now get up to 58 damage total, making this the new highest damage in deflect, or pseudo deflect, or whatever you want to call it. While we're on the topic, let's move to Shinobi. Just really quick, he got so many changes, so it's not unexpected that some aren't documented or some have effects on other moves. To be honest, I expect many more interactions to pop up for him. First, the aforementioned deflect. He no longer knocks you down with the deflect kick when he's in the revenge. Damage is still rather high but it's not an instant kill against half the cast anymore. The other move that was somehow not mentioned in the patch notes was his backflip. 
Everyone who performed it just once since the update immediately noticed the reduced range. But that doesn't mean the move lost his iframes. Dishark made a whole video specifically about that, so if you're interested in more details, follow the link. It seems to work like a dodge and follows the same iframe rules from what I gathered when talking to him yesterday. The difference to a dodge is the guard break vulnerability though. There is none. You either bounce off or the shinobi can counter guard break. Centurion also got a change, his punch, besides having a slightly different animation now can hit teammates now, including stamina drain and stun effect. It won't knock you down though. Another character who had a change to her animation was Hitokiri, to be exact the faint animation of her kick and sweep. But it's not just the animation itself, from what I can tell the window in which you can faint is now larger, up to 400 milliseconds before impact. This follows the rules of normal attacks, but other faintable bashes like Warden's shoulder bash or Tiandi's kick for example can be fainted even later, so it's interesting that they chose this window instead of an even bigger one. Overall this in conjunction with the rolling changes should help the character's offense a little bit, making it harder to avoid the bash mix-up. The punishes are still weird and some are still unsafe, but it's a step in the right direction. So if you were ever wondering whether you should play her, now's a good time. Next, not something undocumented but I still want to mention this because a change resulted in something not immediately obvious to most people. The fact that Kensei's second lights are now 500 milliseconds means that he can visually confirm the pommel strike and then throw the light. Previously this couldn't be done because the light was blockable then. The timing was so tight that you had to input buffer the light to land successfully. But this meant that if someone dodged your pommel strike, you'd get your light parried. This is a nice quality of life side effect for the character, so make sure your pommel strike lands and only then input the attack. Now for something truly outstanding, Conqueror can do damage from afar with his shield basher feet. The method to do this is by being locked onto the person you want to damage and then bashing either of the following things. Minions, a teammate, or a wall. Not all walls work, they need to be rather thin, but it shouldn't be too much trouble to figure out which ones work. On top of that, the move does not apply a revenge tag when used that way, and in general feeds very little revenge because of the low damage. I advise not to actively use this in a game, I wouldn't be surprised if Yubi takes a stance against this as it's clearly not working as intended. It can easily happen on accident in the minion lane, and even if you don't want to do it, it might happen, but if you bash someone repeatedly through a wall, then don't come crying when you get your account suspended. So fair warning here. Two more things. Some attacks like Ward and Side Heavies could increase the range, most notably when clearing minions. The heavies were mentioned in the patch notes, but it seemed that his lights, for example, were also affected. Same goes for Lawbringer lights, Orochi Zone, and some others. Problem is, there isn't really a solid way to verify this except going by hearsay more or less. People that played a character for hundreds of reps will notice a difference and they're most likely correct, but measuring our weapon's hitbox isn't really something we can do. We do know adjustments were made in that regard, and if you feel like your character also has some better tracking or reach now, please share your findings. And as the last thing, some animations in general received a few minor updates, or rather the animation blending, meaning the transition from one to the other is a little smoother now. It's little things, but because we've seen certain moves thousands of times already during our playtime, even these slight differences might throw us off. It's also a good sign in general that we still see this type of polishing in regards to animations. People have been complaining about some, most notably Raider, so this is certainly good news. And that's it for now. 
I'm sure more things will surface and if it's a lot, I'll make a second video. For now, don't forget Viking Jewelry. Thanks for watching. Later everybody.